We're going on to a mobile Monday Silicon Valley. My name is Jose Mateos, I'm one of the organizers. Here today we have also uh, um, Maria Tapia, who is uh, the leader of Mobile Monday Silicon Valley over here. The agenda today is, is this. I'll have uh, five minutes to talk about Mobile Monday and then I will introduce you to Gregory Goldman who is going to be the uh, MC tonight. We will have a presentation of uh, Blue Via. Thanks to uh, James Parton, Head of Marketing. And then we have a panel with three success cases with Amobi, Boku and uh, Microsoft. Afterwards, we have giveaways. So Gregory will talk about Mobile 2.0 and we have a raffle and the opportunity to win five tickets for Mobile 2.0. We'll talk about the next event in September 12th and uh, some announcements. So um, any of you willing to address the audience, you will have five seconds to do it. Open mind. Ten seconds. Ten, twenty, six, no, six seconds. Um, so all right, let's talk briefly about Mobile Monday. How many of you have never been in Mobile Monday? Please raise your hand. Okay. And how many of you know what Mobile Monday is? Really? All right. So Mobile Monday is a, a global community of professionals fostering cooperation and business through educational and networking events. It all started in Helsinki 10 years ago and now we are the world's leading mobile community. We are pretty much everywhere in the world, in all the major cities, and we have more than 100,000 members. Just last year, we held 900 events. So that's what we do. We do high-impact events. We bring audiences of up to 600 local professionals. We feature industry-leading keynote speakers from big companies and also from startups. Here is where more Monday is around the world. So if you are traveling abroad, it would be very, I think, helpful for you to just uh, come by and uh, check what's going on in other countries. So just come by and see um, more Monday or other chapters around the world. In America, we are uh, a non-profit organization driven by volunteer work. We are all volunteers. We are in different different cities, Austin, Boston, Dallas, New York, and uh, we have a, a media reach of over 20,000 people and growing. Some of our previous sponsors, and uh, now we have some um, interesting demographics of our audience here today. So, which phone do you usually do you currently use? Uh, the last few months, years, we have iOS growing. Now it's still growing, but who is catching up is Android. It's growing fast. And we have Palm, Blackberry, and Symbian going slowly down. What's the role? Here in the audience, we have developers, product management, business developers, some bloggers, and we have venture capitalists. So guys, there is money, there is money here, look out. This is your first time attending? This is quite constant every month, so we welcome to all of you who, if this is the first time you come. What platforms do you support? We'll see, we see two big towers and the recent star, the HTML5, it's growing fast. Blackberry, Symbian going down, Windows Mobile is going up, slow, and uh, we have WebOS that we all know what will happen. <laughs> <laughs> so if uh, I only had a choice to build uh, apps for one platform, it would be iThingy 6.9, Android Thingy 47, 
and web apps, 40. So we don't have here BlackBerry, we don't have Symbian or WebOS, it's web app. That's, that's very interesting. Publishing Android apps, you chose the Android Market, Amazon, and GetJet. Good choice. Interested in expanding in Latin America? Yes, that is great. In Europe, even more. That's awesome. And uh, have you heard of Telefonica Bavia Developer Program? Big no. I guess that's why we are here to see or to learn how to make serious money with this program. Do you personally sell your app or services in Latin America or Mexico? 42 years. In Europe, 54 years. And uh, that's it. So uh, now I will introduce you to Gregory. Gregory, please take the microphone and uh, take it from here. Uh, I say thanks for the uh, illustrious remarks. So um, my name is Barry Gorman and I'm a, a, lo a local consultant for Blue BS. So what I'm going to ask uh, right now is to have James Parton, who is the uh, head of marketing for Blue Via, to come up to the to the microphone here. He's going. Well, what we're going to do tonight is as follows. First, we're going to hear from the Blue Via team. We're going to have a, a presentation uh, where we'll talk a little bit about the demographics of the Telefonica footprint in the world, as well as the go-to-market strategy for Blue Via, as well as uh, a short video. Uh, then we'll have some Q&A, Q &A, and uh, please feel free to uh, just, uh, I think there's a mic wandering around somewhere, hopefully. Uh, and then what we'll do after that is we'll have a, a break, and uh, I'll ask uh, uh, Telefonic Blue Via's partners, uh, namely uh, Boku, uh, Amobi and Microsoft to come up here and talk about what they're doing uh, with them uh, on a global basis. So without further ado, let me uh, introduce again James and uh, we'll let James uh, move forward with the program. Thanks James. It, that won't last long. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be booze in a second. So, uh, well first of all, thanks for inviting us over. It's uh, great to be here. I, I won't ask the question then how many people have heard of us, because I guess we've already heard that answer on the slides. Um, while I go through this, I mean Blueview is a kind of a huge thing, so it's going to be tough to go through the detail in 15 minutes, but we'll plough through. There's going to be a Q&A afterwards if you've got any questions, or if you want to follow up directly, you can uh, reach me on my Twitter up there, and if you want to ask questions or abuse me or follow me, that's fine. Okay, so let's get the first thing out the, the way. So yes, we are a telco. So. Boom! <laughs> so, <laughs> what we're trying to do um, with Blue Via is, uh, it's, it's really about APIs. So, to kind of distill one kind of challenge we have, it's not about app stores, okay? So Blue Via isn't an app store. It's actually a kind of program exposing APIs from the mobile network. Um, if you guys are anything like a crowd in Europe, then we kind of know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, well, what do telcos know about APIs? So hopefully over the next kind of eight or so minutes, we'll go through the program and, and give you a flavor of what it's all about. Why do we think this is a little bit different? Um, well, first of all, we've kind of decided to use web technologies and not telco technology um, to try and make it as easy to work with us as possible. Um, our business models are hopefully zero risk, so there should be really nothing stopping you getting involved and just trying it out. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a, in a little bit uh, more detail. Um, there's commitment behind the program, so this isn't just about exposing technology. Um, you know, my job is the marketing job, so we're working with a, a number of people already to really help get behind the, the, the developers working with us to give them that kind of marketing push. And really, it's about the team, you know. So. We care. Um, that's easy to say, but you know, hopefully there's a, a growing number of people that will endorse that. This will scare the hell out of you. So you know, I'm not expecting you to kind of memorize this. What we'll do is we'll put these slides up on SlideShare and you can get this data. But I think what Gregory was uh, uh, keen for us to do was explain a little bit about where Telefonica and Bluebeer is currently deployed. So we're live in uh, seven countries in Europe and Latin America. Uh, as you'll see from here, and coming soon is Brazil. 
And what we've tried to do on this slide is kind of pick out some really key data points to try to give you a kind of flavor for the companies here that want to export their services to Latin America or to Europe, to give you a kind of flavor of the differences in these markets. So I guess in Europe, you can see the UK at the top there. I haven't got a pointer. But you know, the UK, I guess, is very similar to the US, where high penetration of smartphones, money being spent on data services, so nearly 10 euros per month on data services, 30 million people in the UK using uh, app stores, and the UK has a, uh, the telephonic and mobile network in the UK is called O2, for those of you that aren't familiar with that, and they have a 26%, nearly 27% market share. Um, the, the, the market split virtually equally between contract customers and prepaid customers, which is a really important thing to understand as a developer or as a company, because if it's a contract customer, it's easy to take money from the customer. If it's a prepaid customer, then you have to be mindful of how much credit they have at any one point in time. Because if you overprice your services, then you're going to bounce credit checks and stuff like that. So that's the kind of important thing to understand. And I won't go through every country, but just to kind of contrast that with Latin America a little bit, if you take Brazil, for instance, you know, the data archive is only just a shade over two euros a month. So a massive discrepancy in the, in the kind of disposable income that Brazilian customers are spending on data services. And even though Brazil is massively larger than the United Kingdom, only 16 million people are using app stores. Part of that might be credit card billing, for instance. So iTunes obviously has become very successful on credit card sales. But of course, you know, credit card penetration in developing regions is much, much lower than the Western world. So you know, there's some factors again there to consider about how you take your services to market, how you take money from the customer. And again, you know, a massive a skew towards prepay in, in developing markets. So 80% of the market prepaying uh, and having those issues about how much credit at any one time is on their mobile bill. There's other things that we could talk about here which we can follow up with, such as uh, the BlackBerry platform, the Ring platform is, is very prevalent in, in Latin America. You saw some slides there about the kind of skew towards iOS and uh, Android, both here in uh, the US and, and uh, Europe, that's different in Latin America. So, as I say, probably that's as much as I'll go through on that slide, but this will be available for you to take a look at at your, at your leisure. So, kind of getting to the nub of what Bluevia is all about. Um, what it's really about is um, making it as simple as possible for you guys to work with us. So, you don't pay any membership fees, you don't rent any short codes for sending text messages. How many people in the audience have used kind of aggregators to send text messages or um, use uh, carrier billing. There's a few hands going up. So you know, one of the big challenges in doing that at the moment is you have to pay up front for the messages or you have to rent a short code. So before you even figure out how to make money, you're hit with a bunch of cost up front. So we stripped all that away. Um, so there's, there's actually nothing that you pay to us. How we make the revenue share possible is if you plug one of our APIs into your service, such as a text API or an MMS API. The traffic that you generate across that API is a premium out of bundle message to the customer. So that means that we can take the money off the customer and then share that back with the developer. So for no upfront investment, you get a revenue share back from us for the traffic that you push across these APIs. Is that clear? I don't understand that. Any questions on that one? Cool. So in terms of technology, um, the APIs, as I touched on, these are web technologies, um, which is a really important thing, because anyone that's kind of worked with a telco in the past, you know, it's a nightmare. You have to kind of figure out things like SOAP interfaces and stuff like that. That's all gone. These are RESTful, RESTful APIs. Um, we're using OAuth authentication, uh, so nothing weird and wonderful or proprietary to Telefonica, just using standards. Um, and you know, these are cloud-based APIs, so don't just think about mobile, don't just think about apps. These, these APIs can plug into desktop software, um, they can plug into games consoles, they can plug into a toaster, if you want to do that. Um, they can plug into websites, as well as mobile applications. That's a kind of really important point, this is much broader than just mobile. We're working with a, another San Francisco company, Apogee, to make it really simple for you to kind of figure out what the API does, how to discover its different features and calls, so that gets you up uh, running in a really nice graphical user interface. Um, we have our code in uh, GitHub, all the process you'd expect, 
And we've got kind of libraries for these APIs in lots of different languages as well, some of which you can see down the bottom. PHP, Ruby, Java, .NET, um, the Microsoft guys will obviously talk about that in a second, um, and Android. So lots of stuff to get you up and running very quickly. So just coming back to the APIs a second, this kind of shows you um, the revenue share that we, we pay back. So just to recap, no fee for getting involved, no cost to use the APIs. In return, we send you a check for these revenue shares every time you generate a transaction. So your application can send SMS, it can receive SMS, you can send picture messages, you can receive picture messages, you can uh, embed advertising, and of course we'll hear from Amobi in a second. Um, you can plug in uh, recurring subscription uh, payment models, so you can have a recurring billing relationship with customers from Telefonica. Um, <clears throat> there's in-app billing, which we actually announced today, and again you'll hear from Boku later, which is really exciting. Um, and then we also offer location lookups, which are free, um, and we also use, uh, we offer an API called user context. We probably need to come up with a better name than that, but uh, basically this API allows you to query the customer to help you build much more insight around who's using your applications. So this API returns data like, is the customer a contract customer? Is it a prepaid customer? What spend profile are they in? Are they a high spender, a low spender? Uh, do they travel? Uh, are they 18 verified if you're uh, offering gambling services or adult services? So there's a whole bunch of contextual information that can really enrich how your kind of application serves the needs of those customers. Next one is um, marketing support. So as I touched on at the beginning, you know, this isn't just about tech. This is also making sure that the companies that work with us really get support and a push. So this is just kind of like a sample of uh, the kinds of things we can do for you. We obviously, you know, Telefonica has massive reach and influence in the media, so we can uh, work with you to endorse press releases and help you uh, drive exposure of your announcements. We're very uh, successful in terms of case studying the people work that are working with us, which again, you guys can use as kind of, you know, marketing collateral. Um, and we, you know, obviously through our work, we spend a lot of time with journalists, with industry analysts, and we pull these case studies all out, out, out all the time as kind of demonstrable examples of how developers are working with us and making money. We also do a lot of events, and increasingly what you're doing is where we go to an event and have a speaking slot, we don't necessarily go along, we substitute our developers for us. So it's the developers talking about Bluebeer rather than you know, some dull executive from Telefonica talking about Bluebeer. Guilty as charged. Um, media partnerships, we're building, uh, we're building relationships with the Guardian newspaper, you may have come across in Europe. Um, they get something like uh, 83 million unique visitors a month. So we sponsor their apps blog. And that gives us a platform to promote, again, the developers working with us in the mainstream media. And we're also building relationships with more specialist industry media as well, such as Mobile Industry Review. Local marketing, so we work with the individual countries that I showed on that infographic, so you can get local marketing support to push you through the regional app stores and through the social media um, channels that the, uh, the individual operating businesses have. And then of course as Bluevia we have blogs and social media, etc. So there's, there's a whole bunch of things we can do to help build your visibility. Okay, so the next slide I think is a video, if I've got my memory right. This is just a, a couple of minutes that kind of runs through uh, the Bluevia proposition in a kind of you know, relaxed and jokey way. Give you a flavor of what I've been talking about. So hopefully this will work. It's easy. Making money's tough. No, uh, not another hackathon. I need a cashathon. Maybe someone at the hackathon can help. Hmm. Make money. Interesting. <laughs> Sounds like an aftershave. What's up? You tried Blue Via? Nah. I use Erlang. It's got web scale. Huh? I don't think it's a language. Oh, not a language. Well, you should try those guys then. They're Rubyists. 
telcos suck. What do they know about software? Huh? They'll make you sign contracts and then suck you dry with certification and shit. Probably make you pay for the privilege. No, yeah, they give you money, that's the point. Yeah, it's easy money. Rev share. Share of what? If your app uses an API that generates revenue from their customers, they'll give you a slice. Which customers? Lots of O2 customers like UK, Germany, plus lots of Mother Star customers in Spain and Latin America. Millions and millions of customers. And all I have to do is just drive traffic via the APIs. Yup, they've got quite a few now, and it's growing all the time. Some have business models, some don't. You should check it out like I did. PHP, Ruby, Android, loads of SDKs, nice. Let's cut the code and count the cash. So this actually is another example about the way we help support developers. The, the main character in that is a guy called Hamish, who works, he, he's a developer from the UK. Uh, so he wrote the tech stack application, and what this basically is, is a Mac OS app. So we have uh, this live in the App Store now from Apple. So obviously not in the US, unfortunately, but if you're a, a telephonic or O2 customer in, in uh, Argentina, Mexico, or, or the UK, you can go to the, the Mac uh, OS store, download the application, and, and send MMS or SMS from your desktop. It's integrated into Gmail and all the kind of things that you really expect. So an example about how we're actually using real developers in our marketing to give them a boost in visibility as well. So, everything's hunky-dory then? Um, no, it's not. You know, we, we try to be open and honest about where our problems lie. We, we're not going to oversell this because it's early days for us. Um, some of the kind of issues that we have, so we don't have API ubiquity in every one of those countries. So, you know, we don't have ticks in every box, so that's something that we're working on to, uh, to, to address. So we also use OAuth, as I touched on, which is great, you know, because it's a, an open web standard. However, it's a little bit clunky. So we're working hard to try to improve the user experience of how you authenticate with uh, Bluebeer to make sure there's lower barriers to entry for customers adopting the products that you build on top. Um, I talked about the business model, the fact that any traffic that you generate across the API is charged as a premium. So whilst that's great because it means we can pay back to you a revenue share, it also does present a kind of challenge for the customer because they might have, especially in Europe, as I'm sure it is here, a lot of customers have hundreds or thousands of text messages included in their monthly tariff. So by charging a premium, they kind of, some we've had feedback saying, well, well why am I paying you know, additional money for these text messages when I have a thousand in my bundle? So, you know, we, it's a catch-22 situation. We want to give money back to developers, but also we need to be mindful about the reaction from consumers. Um, so we're looking at different business models, uh, how we can implement you know, more than just the developer pays models to give you ultimate flexibility. Um, our analytics need work. So, you know, uh, one challenge for us is how we present great data back to you so you really know who's using you know, the APIs, traffic and all those kinds of things. That's something we're conscious of and trying to fix. And, you know, of course, the, the, the obvious one is at the moment we can only build Telefonica customers. So even though we have lots of those, you know, 280 million, a lot of developers say to us, you know, wouldn't it be great if you can connect together multiple operators in one country? And again, there's lots of work underway to try to fix that too. So, you know, I guess in summary, it's far from perfect. So, you know, the reason for speaking to people like you is, is really to try to, well, one, make you aware that this thing exists, and secondly, to try and get you involved, because, you know, we can only make it better if we've got good input and, and feedback in terms of the features that we currently have and what you want to see in the roadmap. And that, that's kind of it for me. So, in terms of uh, what to do next, Bluevia.com is obviously the, the place to find all of the information. Um, we're, we're in San Francisco and Seattle the whole week. So if you want to come meet with us, you can find us on the Open Hours website and book some time with us. Um, obviously, follow us on Twitter. And the, the last plug is for, if you haven't already downloaded it, downloadDeveloperEconomics.com, which is a kind of uh, 
60-page report about the whole kind of mobile apps, mobile monetization challenge. Um, talks about talks to over 800 developers worldwide, and it talks to over 25 brands and, and the brand strategies for the big players about how they're approaching the mobile challenge. And that's me. Thank you. So let me add a, a little bit more on that. So. The Blue Bia folks were going to be all day at, at Mobile 2.0 on Thursday, which is a uh, you know, mobile event we do here in the city. And so if you are a developer, and after you hear from everyone, if you're really interested, uh, come see me and uh, you know, I will give you a, a pass to, to go in and talk with them. So that's, uh, uh, let me open it for the floor because uh, we want to try to make this interactive. So I think uh, Mario or somebody has a microphone. Who would like to ask your first question? I have a question. You talked about going to Brazil. So, what's the uh, the strategy for going to Brazil at this time? So, so the, the Brazilian rollout would be um, adding the same APIs that we currently have. So, sending SMS, sending MMS, receiving them, uh, advertising, all the kind of capabilities that we talked about, uh, plus the marketing support that we can offer as well. So it's, it's really kind of, what we're trying to do is Telefonic has 25 countries around the whole company. So it's kind of like fitting the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. So you know, Brazil is the next on the list to, to you know, piece into place. A question on recurring subscriptions you had on your list earlier. What does recurring subscription mean from the end user perspective? How do they subscribe, resubscribe, terminate the subscription? Yeah, so what you can do is you can set up uh, different price points on how much you want to take from the, the customer on a monthly basis or weekly basis, and you set the frequency. So that could be daily, monthly, uh, weekly, yeah. Um, and the customer gets billed or directly to their telephonic bill, and then you get the revenue share, share back in return. It's really hard to see. I don't know where you are. Sorry. Who am I looking at? <laughs> Question over here. I don't know if you can see my hand. Question? Uh, yeah. Uh, do you work with any mobile ad networks from a monetization perspective? That's coming next. So we'll go ahead. So the short answer is yes, and uh, we've got our partners here from Amobi. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about that in a bit more detail, but uh, yes, we've got the advertising APIs in there, and we're offering about 50% revenue share on those. So. Another question? Sorry, any more questions? All right, yeah, I assume you'll have some questions after the next. So what, what we're going to do now is, um, so I'm going to ask the other partners to come up, but I'm going to ask these guys to uh, hang around, uh, maybe uh, the first row there. Um, so I'm going to ask um, uh, Michael from Mobi to come on up, and uh, uh, Ron from uh, Boku, come on up, and Joe from Microsoft. Uh, so what we're going to do now is, uh, I, I know Ron, you've got to uh, stand, so we'll get Joe to sit, you can stand there. Um, so since you're presenting, uh, you're the only one presenting, right, Mike? I think. Okay, so here. All right. So what the approach we're going to take now is what, I, what I've asked with uh, the partners is that uh, now I'm really excited about what Bluebia is doing because it's reached out to a lot of uh, well, some big companies, but also a lot of startups to try to do some things. And, and uh, for those of you who are a little bit skeptical about telcos, I understand that. I've worked with telcos for 15 years. But I really feel like Bluevia is, is on to some interesting things. And, you know, Bluevia is only going to be successful if the developer community helps us make it a success. You know, this is not a top-down, you know, thing that we're trying to do, like the Kremlin. You know, this is not what this is about. We're trying to work on a long tail. And obviously that's a learning experience. But I think we're off to a, the beginning of a good start. And with your help, we can make it uh, better as each month go by. So I'll first ask uh, Michael to say a few words about, for those of you who might not know about Amobi, what the heck is Amobi, and then how Amobi's uh, working with uh, 
Telefonica Bluvia, and then I'll ask Ron to do the same, and then I'll ask Joe to talk about uh, Microsoft's partnership. Okay. Great. Uh, thank you, Greg. Thank you, Jason, from Telefonica. We uh, are privileged to be here at Amobi to help you think through monetization opportunities with your innovations and developments on apps and mobile web, etc. Briefly on Amobi, we're Sequoia and Excel funded here in Silicon Valley. But we're working very closely with Telefonica throughout the region. So we have offices in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, we have a presence in Mexico City. We have data centers actually in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So we're committed to the 12 markets for which Telefonica have presence in Latin America and can be a good partner with Bluevia and with yourself. So I'm here to offer a bit of a pedantic presentation. Some of you might have thought through monetization and had it covered, and some of you might think this is to be new ideas. In either case, it's to provoke concepts and opportunities for you, the developer, to make money from your investment, and in many cases, your livelihood, in allowing consumers to tap into the ingenuity that you create through development efforts. Headline, though, there are only three ways we see to make money. One will hear shortly, but that's the consumer-derived. Obviously, virtual currencies, uh, opportunities to derive more content, more unique, open Easter eggs in areas for which otherwise is not free, aka freemium models, is a wonderful model for which you should explore, and I'm sure we'll hear shortly. Uh, secondly, why I'm here is the marketer and advertiser. Uh, without question, many business models around the world are fueled by advertising, and we'll walk you through our experiences, particularly in Europe, but recently in Latin America, and I will address the question about which ad networks are going to be partnered in a moment. And then lastly, the mobile distributor. Don't underestimate that those folks, whether they be OEMs like Motorola, Samsung, HTC, prominent brands in markets like Latin America, uh, want your content and have means and mechanisms to distribute that, often with a revenue share at hand. Oh, I forgot. Mom and Dad, there's a fourth way to make money. Uh, a lot of consumers, we underestimate the use of iPods and other devices for which, when you think about it, the bill goes to Mom and Dad. And as you think of your content and cater to certain demographics, don't lose sight of who actually pays that bill and think through cleverly opportunities to exploit Mom and Dad's generosity. So at the first point, identify yourself and be realistic. Oftentimes, we speak to developers through our partners, so we don't work with the long tail directly. We work with the Motorola, with the Telefonica, with large carriers around the world to speak to their constituents, which are developers. Be realistic. Many people have the best ideas in sliced bread, which is phenomenal, but then they have an idea that they want to go a little bit outside the curve to monetize and create a new ad unit or something that's never been seen before or target all the individuals on a Monday night near the ball game who might be watching a mobile speaker to target them with one offer. And the reality is to get marketers to come up with one-offs and these caveats and outside the ecosystem is tough. It's a challenge. So really as a developer, you have a couple models. Are you free, are you paid, and or do you exploit a freemium model? Or do you use an ad network or a combination of ad networks with mediation? The reality is you're more likely than not, especially if you're bootstrapped, particularly if you have investment from venture capital, to invest in your own sales teams. It's unlikely at the outset in particular. Over time, if you're successful, you may very well do that. In contrast, if you're an independent content owner, so someone with whom aspires to be a media conglomerate who might have a portfolio of applications under which you have one brand and one company, traditionally, again, you're kind of looking at ad network versus mediation as your business models. These are for advertising-based business models, not to circumvent, of course, what we'll hear from Boku. And then if you're a larger brand, of which some were in the room earlier, you're a first-tier content player, more likely than not, you're investing in a sales team. But if you are like most major business lines, even a, a Yahoo or Google, you don't sell out everything. So as a backstop, as a complement to those efforts, you might want to think through an ad network or mediation. And often you'll say, well, gosh, I'm a premium play. I've got content no one else has. I'm going to put a firewall or a paywall before the consumer. You might want to question whether that's been successful on the web. Until recent days, you know, New York Times, Wall Street Journal notwithstanding, most media companies on web have been mostly successful through advertising-based models, not consumer models. Now that said, one of the partners we're very excited about that's in the room, Double Recall, has come up with some clever concepts for which you, as a developer, can integrate their SDK to allow the consumer to type in some kind of brand awareness 
to get past that content and to exploit the otherwise area for which you would put behind a wall that consumers would pay. So said a different way, it'd be a brand subsidizing that content. And it's something we can talk about offline or we'll be here in the room if you can raise your hands. So coming to the close of uh, just the concepts here, speak the language of the industry. We spoke about this before. The more you deviate, the more you're creative, that's phenomenal, but do it within the context of an ad unit, an ad format. Why is that? Agencies work in scale. They want to reach millions of consumers simultaneously. They love the best thing, the newest idea. They want to see it first, but they want to see it exploited across multiple places. There are areas for which you can uh, absorb this. The Mobile Marketing Association in tandem with the Interactive Advertising Bureau put standards out. This isn't to curtail creativity. There are rich media units, there are units that are interactive, that are 3D, that take advantage of touch devices, but they're all standards, and those standards are critical for success and for you guys to earn revenue. Uh, and then data, we'll talk about data. A lot of people just come out of the gates and they bring out their apps and they bring out their mobile web efforts in the best light possible, but they lose sight that they can actually take advantage that consumers want to interact with those apps and they may volunteer information. Certainly you get for free, if you will, on the SDKs, whether or not to allow location. Everyone's seen this. But other areas, and we try to emphasize with the more boldness of what marketers care about, age, gender, household income may be more difficult to derive depending on the content of your application. But if you're a financial-oriented application, why not ask the household income? And then other areas, of course, are zip, marital status, whether or not you have children in the household. These are all important and paramount to how brands by this media. This is a convoluted slide. I said, well, wait, gosh, if I ask consumers about all kinds of information, I beg the scrutiny of the government to come after me. And I would not put that lightly. Without question, we're all concerned about privacy. We're all concerned about how our data is used by ad networks or used by the big boys. And this is a slide that was used with Congress recently in May to basically illustrate in summary that many places users are in control. And I think the one thing that mobile will protect, if you will, versus the somewhat uh, more sinister land of the web is that there are very few things you can do with cookie extrapolation and places for which there's more harmony in the, web, in the mobile environment for which you can ask users to opt in, and oftentimes they will. The percentage for which consumers will say yes is, is pretty high when you ask them. So the future, we're big believers in these guys' kids. Really, these guys are going to grow which is my laugh because I see these two kids who are beautiful on the screen, you guys see nothing. But the, what the concept was of the future is mobile commerce. We see transactions, and if you look at Amazon, eBay, publicly traded companies that pronounce the amount of commerce happening via the mobile phone, advertising dollars will flow as a result of that. And when you have abilities to take these consumers for which you're attracting to the investments of your content and your creation to developers and channel them, not just to Amazon, not just to eBay, but to travel companies, fashion companies, automotive companies, et cetera, that's gonna fuel the ecosystem. I come from Yahoo originally in the search days, and I often remark, as ubiquitous as search was and as successful it's obviously been proven by Google and others, it wasn't until 2007 that Southwest Airlines put its first dollar into search. So we have to be very, very patient. So a couple questions are asked proactively. One, so we do work with a lot of local ad networks. We work in particular with companies such as Hunt Ads, Asmobile, Terra, and uh, Ad Funky, all of which are regionally focused or particular market focused. We're adding about four to five ad networks a month. We see a lot of growth in Latin America. And then what do I do next? Um, write the coattails of what you heard earlier. So go to bluevia.com, download the SDK, Amobi is pre-integrated, so all our technologies that actually are used by Telefonica salespersons themselves are at your disposal as part of that API already under Bluevia. Secondly, choose where within your app you want to place the ads. Above the fold is obviously a little bit better performing than below the fold. And very last sentence, uh, figure out which ad networks you want to work with and let us know. So thank you very much. So next I'm going to ask uh, Ron to come up. He's the president and co-founder of Boku. Um, I wanted to point out, uh, a lot of you, I assume most people use LinkedIn, for example. If you're not aware of it already, there's a Bluevia group, which I highly encourage you, if you're really interested, to, to join. Uh, for example, today, the most popular discussion is Bluevia launches payment API with partner Boku. So, you know, you want to follow what's going on, join that. I think we're up to like 5,000 people in the, in the discussion groups. 
And you know, that'll give you a ch good chance to kind of watch what we're doing and get involved and learn more about the program. So uh, Ron, uh, please. So I'll keep it pretty simple. Um, we're very excited about the Bolivia announcement, most specifically as a payments company. I'll tell you a little bit about Boku. We've uh, been around for almost two years. We launched in 2009, and we are now live on 237 carriers, but never in a way that's exposed to the developers so that they can have so much control over the payment experience. So Telefonica, with their 300 million customers, forward, not so pretty forward, extremely forward in how they approach the market. We don't see this kind of thinking across the board, definitely not at the group level. And what we announced today with uh, with them was the ability to access our APIs, which you can get at bluebia.com, it's going to give you a shot up on the screen. You can access app APIs to be able to do in-app payments. In the announcement we did jointly with them today, it was noted that Distillos Research put it at 4% of apps in the Apple App Store are in-app payment apps. Yet 72% of revenue, that's much better, isn't it? Yeah. Should I start again? I am wrong. <laughs> so about 72% of the revenue generated in the Apple App Store is from in-app payments. And that's essentially what we've announced today. So um, I can go a little bit into sort of Boku's, Boku's history, but what we saw as an opportunity as people were transacting on the web, uh, Facebook, etc., that people were um, finding friction as companies that develop in the Silicon Valley, yet are having customers come from around the world. And Telefonica represents both the developed countries, the like UK and Germany, as well as the developing countries, soon to announce Brazil, where you're reaching customers for two kinds of reasons. One, it's just easier to pay with your phone number. If you're on the web, you're just entering a phone number and you get to skip over all the things you've done with a credit card, like your address, CVV, expiration, zip code, etc. If you're in Germany, you have to fill out a lot more. You're filling out your ELV bank transfer, which is similar to our ACH. With Boku and with, with Bluevia, all you have to do is enter in your telephone number and reply to a text message for the charge. Or if you're online, just tap on the inside of a mobile app. This removes a lot of friction. So you're reaching these two customers, those who don't want to be able to pay because it's, it's too much of a pain, and those who can't. And the can't is a pretty, uh, pretty important segment. If you notice on the, on the market slides that James was showing, the, the prepaid and postpaid mix changes globally. So in the UK, you see a split 50-50. But in the developing market, it's much more closer to 75 or 80%. Customers are actually topping up their phone. They don't have a bank account. They don't have a credit card. And with Bluevia, you're now able to tap into that customer and monetize them. So we thank them for the opportunity that they've given us to be able to work with them. We're very proud of the partnership that we have. And we think the technology we built together is pretty fantastic. And we welcome you guys to try it out. So what we'll do is we'll have uh, Joe talk a little bit about the Microsoft partnership and then we're going to open the floor again. I'm mindful that we're talking at you a lot and we're not getting enough uh, interactivity. So let me let, let Joe uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the partnership with Microsoft and then we'll immediately move to questions. And, and there's a lot of, there's quite a few people here from Luvia, so you know, during the break afterwards with the drinks, you know, feel free to, to, re to walk up to anybody that has a Luvia shirt if you have questions. Hi, I'm Joe Hofstad from Microsoft, and I've been working with the Blue Vio organization for about a year and a quarter now to supplement their developer program with Microsoft's developer community. Um, a few years ago, we, at, us at Microsoft started noticing a trend that we call web mobile convergence. And really what it is, is being able to initiate and communicate with people on whatever device that they're, that they're currently on, whether it's a PC, Mac, or um, or on a mobile phone. And in order to be able to do that, what you need are the type of technologies that Bluevia provides, the ability to terminate calls on the mobile network or on the fixed line network. And so between Microsoft and Bluevia, what we did is we created an SDK for Microsoft developers to be able to download, to be able to install into Visual Studio, and to be able to, what we call at Microsoft, raise the level of abstraction so people don't have to get into lower level code while they're building these applications. So people within a single um, in integrated development environment could create a phone app and be able to create a desktop app. So you don't have to, again, think about the lower level programming that, that's required, where you can more think in terms of creativity. One of the things that I saw, a big difference between Bluevia and, again, a lot of the other um, 
companies out there in the industry was this relatively deep knowledge of the web and emerging trends within web developer community. And that's really, you know, was the basis of our partnership and moving and moving forward with them. So I'm not going to um, really go into too many technical details or anything at this point. If you want to follow up with the conversation, we're over there and I can walk you through some of the developer tools. I can run you through a media application that shows some of the integration of voice and um, you know voice and data communications within an application that can reside on a on a desktop or if you decided to build it for any other form factor it could work for those we have it running on a, on a mobile phone itself but ultimately what it's about is you know this entire partnership has been about is taking microsoft's millions of developers be taking our um, you know very organized developer evangelism organization at microsoft and working with a partner to be able to drive innovation you know leveraging these apis and leveraging these different technologies and ad platforms that you know as part of the overall web development community Thank you. so let me um open the floor again if you uh have uh, any questions for the uh, uh the partners So let me ask a question. Um, who's who's actually doing uh, selling anything or doing any services or applications in Latin America today in the audience? Right. How many people are interested in, in exploring that market? And I should include Mexico. Okay. How about uh, Spain, Germany, United Kingdom, Ireland? All right. So how many people in the audience are would you consider yourselves uh, developers? Right. Okay. So first of all, everybody, everybody's a true developer. So let put your hands up again. Okay. All you people there, basically, come see me afterwards, and I'll give you a free, a free pass to Mobile 2.0. Uh, sorry, if you're just doing biz dev for a big company, you don't get a free pass. But if you're a real developer, you get a, you get a free pass, and you can come see uh, the Blue Via. We'll have an open house on uh, on Thursday, uh, all day. And so you can come and find out, talk to us, find out more about it. Really engage with uh, the folks. Um, so, go ahead. Just one second. I want to make sure that people can hear you. Yeah, this was a question for Boku. Can you elaborate a little bit on what are people actually paying for? What do they buy through their phones? And what's the ticket size? Just some some numbers on that. Sure. This is on. So um, our partners include Facebook, Electronic Arts, Sony, Disney. I didn't spend too much time talking about that, but generally we started out with online purchases where the people that are developing online were able to add payments via mobile as an option. We've now shifted and we launched an Android SDK where people are uh, purchasing on mobile. It's like one tap. So if you go to boca.com slash Android, you can see what that is. Generally, in both of these, we're seeing the same kinds of goods. It's digital or virtual goods being purchased, or virtual currencies. And our average price point globally is around $8. Do you have any perspective to share on any of these mobile content providers like uh, Timvi, Naranya, Bongiorno, Adara? I mean, there are a whole set of folks in Latin America, all over the place, doing very large volumes. Uh, What's your association with them and what's your perspective on their business? So our approach has been to work directly with carriers where we can because the APIs that are offered by the carriers, um, like this in this example, are actually more robust. You get closer to direct billing. You get features like granular price points where they're available. So instead of being fixed at a dollar or two dollars, you can get to a dollar thirty-three. You get better payouts and you get better performance. Most of those companies, uh, most of the companies that have been in the space before are in the content delivery space and added premium SMS as a mechanism. That actually works fairly well and we offer that uh, in different pockets. But what Boku's done is set itself as an abstraction layer above all of the different countries. So when you connect via one API to Boku, regardless of how Brazil might be charging or how, uh, how Germany might be charging or how Russia is charging, you're able to do, you're able to do billing using Boku. And we make sort of standard APIs exposed to show exactly what price points are available, what the payouts are, et cetera. So a little shameless plug here for Boku, uh, but you know that's what I was trying to say. 
No. So uh, it's a shameless plug up there. But my point is that if you go to the Blue Bee, uh, LinkedIn, you'll be able to follow what's going on. So there's constantly being updates done, partners coming in, things we're doing. So we really ask, you know, just sign up. It's easy to do. Um, find out more. Uh, uh, question to Moby. You're saying sharing and caring of all that data. Uh, how much of that data are you willing to share with the developer for us to calculate our return of revenue and what to do the IDEs, age, location, demographics? Yeah, two aspects to the question. Um, from a data acquisition standpoint, it's always best to ask the user directly. So mechanisms to do that for which you yourself create are the ones that are best received because the consumer feels that they're in control. Second from that, there are two areas for which the carrier are investing. I won't say this is available today, but that's the kind of catch here. So one is through the means for which, even in a prepay model, because we do credit history and other checks, there are means for which a carrier has data fields that are unsurmounted. And other than a Facebook, perhaps, for which obviously in a different story, you really are at uh, luxury when you work with a carrier to touch to that data. The second one, and actually we work with Telefonica across the region for this as well, is opt-in. There's a pretty large program in markets like Europe, O2 more, and markets like Latin America for which the carrier says, I am asking you some pretty detailed questions, your age, your gender, say three other variables. In return, I'm offering you some kind of service. It will be some kind of discount on the carrier bill or what have you. And you're also agreeing to get offers sent to you via SMS. So we help that program. And then what we're doing is bridging that knowledge into means that can then be leveraged in a developer program. We're not there today, that's the next step. So we're committed to user transparency, user control, but then developer leverageability with the carrier. One thing I think a lot of developers don't realize is that um, we've come a long way in the mobile advertising space from the AdMob days. And, and um, you know, we'll discuss it a lot on Thursday, but you, know, you really start, you need to start thinking about the fact that you, know, you can build a whole ecosystem around your, your app. You know, if you think through your business model, you kind of figure out like who's going to want to buy this and who's going to want to advertise this and so on. The technology is starting to be available. So there's a lot you can do today that will allow you to build a kind of an ecosystem approach for, for your apps as you, as you put it in the market. Any, any other questions? Right. I'm going to ask the Bluevia team to come up one more time just uh, because we're going to, you know, I think we're going to continue the reception. Again, so that you can, uh, if you didn't meet them already, they'll uh, have a chance to see them. And I want to thank uh, Ron and, and Joe and Michael. And uh, we're going to be on the road uh, in Seattle uh, tomorrow, so if you happen to be in Seattle, you can come see us tomorrow. Um, let me ask James and, and Chris and, and so on and Jose to come back up one more time. So this, uh, you know, part of what we're, we're trying to do this week sure. is uh, just to, you know, this is basically our, uh, this is our, we're coming out party, so to speak, right? And, uh, you know, we're, do, we're doing things here, um, you know, progressively. So uh, we, we, we really welcome your feedback. Those of you who are developers and you're thinking about us, you know, we don't have all the answers, but I certainly can say for myself is trying to take a, perhaps an independent approach here for a second. You know, I've worked with a lot of carriers, T-Mobile, Sprint, uh, you know, uh, AT&T, um, uh, Vodafone, and I really feel Bluevia is doing something special because, you know, frankly, carriers, you know, they tend to be very uh, uh, top-down approach, and you basically do what they say, or you could drop dead, and that's not the approach Bluevia is taking. Now, I'm not going to tell you, and I'm not going to lie to you, you know, we're, we're, work, we're going forward, it's slow, and there are changes, and there are cultural issues. But, you know, I think the team is uh, uh, folks who really are dedicated to this and, and somewhere around here is Jose, uh, who uh, runs the entire program and, uh, you know, he's been a godsend, frankly, from my perspective. So, um, that's it. Um, st stick around a little bit longer, meet with the folks. If you are a developer and you want to meet with uh, the Bluevia team one-on-one -on, -one on Thursday uh, at the Grand Hyatt Hotel, 
come, come give me your business card and I'll give you a code and you can uh, come on over uh, uh, for free, okay? So one more thing here, uh, this is time for announcements. So if any of you wants to just address the audience, you have a microphone here and uh, just come off the stage and uh, talk. No announcements today? All right, bar is open. Oh, this one has been? Come on. Come on. Hi, you guys. My name is Steve. I'm with At Moby. I just want to let you know that the Santa Clara Convention Center at the end of October, we have an app dev conference. We can meet all the different players. This one probably will be the biggest app development conference in Silicon Valley of the year. So you have a chance to talk with all kinds of companies that are involved in mobile and spot space. I think Blue Via, you guys are going to be there too. Uh, it's a very big, there's going to be companies that are carriers, uh, service providers. But it's from, well, it's the App Dev Conference. That's all I can remember. It's the Santa Clara Convention Center coming up in October. Right. Bar is open, guys. Go for it. <laughs> 